Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about this little beauty, the Yongnuo YN565ES EX Flash Speedlight Strobe, call it what you will. Um, this is a fantastic little gadget that if you add it to your camera will transform your photographs. Um, people talk about lenses, fast glass, new bodies, all this, this sort of stuff. But trust me, if you take like taking photographs of people, portraits inside or even out, um, even if it's just of the kids and the grandkids running around, adding one of these to your SLR and bouncing the light off ceilings, off walls, will uh, will just, just really make your photographs look so, so much better. And the beauty with the YM565EX is that it can operate as a fully automatic flash on your Canons. They do a Canon version, I think they do a Nikon version as well. Now, in this particular video, um, I'm going to be filming it using a combination of my 600D, which is this footage now, and my Logitech C920 webcam, and you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, and I'll be demoing the flash on my Canon EOS 350D, which you can see here, and also the 600D, which is which is taking taking the video. So sometimes it might seem like I'm talking about something that uh, you think, well, that's a 350D, and then it's a 600D, and we're flicking back. Which really, I've just got the 600D, so you can see everything goes together. So I love my YN565EX. Um, and I'd uh, recommend it to anybody. You can have them for well under £100 in the UK. I think they're under $100 in the US as well. Tend to be on places like eBay or Amazon. Um, it's a bounce and swivel head on it. As I say, it can operate in manual. It can operate in automatic. It can operate as a slave, which is quite common for these sorts of flashes in the fact that you know when, you, when your on-camera flash pops, that one, that can trigger this. But also, with cameras like the 600D, the T3i, and later models, it can actually communicate, the 600D, the T3i can communicate wirelessly with the ym 565 ex to give you wireless, fully automatic flash. This is mind-blowing, uh, the fact that you can do that. Um, so, in this video, I'm going to be going through how to use the ym 565 ex you know, a beginner's guide. So it's going to be useful for people who have just got a YN565EX and are looking to uh, learn more about it. Also, if you're thinking about buying a YN565EX, it'll probably be really useful too because it'll give you an idea of how to use the flash and whether it could fit in with your particular workflow. Um, so I tell you what, um, that's enough from me. Why don't we flip the camera around and take a closer look at the Yongnuo YN565EX flash strobe. Whatever you like. Let's have a closer look at the YN565. Um, it comes in this rather natty um, case, which is great for protecting it. And inside, you'll also get a uh, instruction manual, which I definitely recommend you read, even though the English can be a little bit difficult, and a stand to put it on as well. But for now, let's take a look at the flash. As you can see, we have a uh, bounce and swivel head that basically can turn from, I think it does, does it do 180 all the way around? Well, basically almost every single angle you can get at and then you can angle the head as well like so um, we've also got on the front of the flash if we pull this bit out here we've got a diffuser which helps to soften the light a little bit make it bounce around and we've also got a bounce card as well and you can use those together or separately so the idea with that is that you could have the flash firing it bounce light that way to give it beautiful um, catch light to people's eyes and you may say well there's no zoom on the flash well that's because all the zoom is done internally and I'll show you that in a second as well on the front of the flash we've then got our uh, infrared detector so this is how the camera and the flash can talk to each other whether it would be just um, for using uh, infrared or they can do it using the uh, flash talking like strobing to each other which again I'll explain in a minute we've got a battery compartment uh, on the side the flash locks onto the camera with just a simple thumb wheel, nice and easy, nice and reliable. And then on the back, we've got a control panel. So uh, let's turn the flash on. Now I'll try and get this so that you can actually see what's going on. And the YM565 is a very advanced flash. It can do lots of different things, but in this, this video, we're just really gonna be looking at the basic functions, which is uh, ETTL motor, automatic flash, manual mode, and a little bit of off camera. 
So you can see the back, we've got our kind of our thumb buttons to, to, to scroll, well, not really scroll, but to control things. And uh, we've got our pilot button for flash, firing the flash. What's a bit confusing is that if the flash is ready to fire, it's red. If it's charging, it's green. I think if it, fl if it f uh, shows alternative red and green, it's overheated, so you should let it cool down. But the main ones we're really interested in at the moment is the mode button. Because if we press the mode button, you see we're in ETTL mode now, full automatic mode. So all we've got to do is when it's on our camera, turn it on and put it in ETTL mode. Set our camera up to aperture priority and shoot away. How easy is that? Or we could switch to M for manual, um, where we change the power of the flash manually. You might just be able to see it again, 1 16th, 1 132, 1 or back to full power, half power, quarter power. Um, nice and simple as that. As that. Uh, the function button, you can get into the advanced functions of the camera, or you can just use it to turn the backlight on, so you can see what you're doing in tricky lighting conditions. This button here, with the little arrows on, that switches between front curtain sync and rear curtain sync. Don't worry about it for now. And then we've got a zoom button here on the right. So this is where we can press the zoom button, and if we use the buttons on the wheel, we can change the zoom of the flash. So 24 millimeter wide angle zoom, 28 all the way through to 105, I think it goes to. 105 or we can go back to automatic and the beauty with automatic is that as you zoom using your lens the flash will zoom as well um, and then we've got our power button there and that's it really let's pop it back into uh, automatic mode ettl multi mode is where the flash can fire like a strobe effect so i'm not really going to be talking about that in this video because although it's very interesting it was something we really used back in the days of film um, so uh, you probably won't use it. The function you'll be using most is ETTL or manual mode and you just flick between them by pressing the mode button there. So now let's have a look at how you might want to set up your uh, 600D, T3i or generally any Canon DSLR um, to shoot uh, with the YN565EX. Um, remember these are just guidelines, you can play around but basically this is how I do it. So the first thing is I might make sure my camera is in aperture priority mode um, and then what I recommend you do is go into your menu and go to the far right spanner go into the custom functions and custom functions custom functions three is your flash sync speed in aperture priority mode and I just recommend you change that to make sure it's at one two hundredth of a second fixed because that on it's, it's basically I think it makes things simpler um, 1 200th to 1 60th auto is very useful as well because it means you're unlikely to get moving uh, blur from portrait shots where people are still if they're running around you might do um, or you could go for auto now you tend to use auto if you're using a flash in a situation where the background is very dark indeed like something like a sunset or you're outside at night and what that will do is it'll leave the shutter open on your camera to get a nicely exposed background with the flash exposing the foreground but you must really have your camera on a tripod so for now i would suggest you shoot um, custom functions one two hundred fixed and it kind of makes things that little bit simpler um, next thing i would do is i would set my iso to something like um, 400. I know that isn't great for portrait shots because you're going to be getting a little bit of noise but the advantage of that is it will give us fast recycle times. The flash will be ready to fire quicker so we can take more photos and we're going to be shooting in RAW anyway. You know, Go to quality and make sure you're shooting in RAW so you know, we can recover a lot of detail that, that way. Uh, aperture, I don't know, I would tend to start at something like f8 and then play around with the depth of field maybe go around to f5.6 depending on what lens you've got on really and kind of speak kind of speaking of lenses for this demo i've got my kit 18 to 55 on if you're taking nice portraits just remember go to the long end go to the 55 mil end or put your, your longer telephoto on or maybe if you've got a nice um, prime or something pop that on but remember with portraits you always want to be shooting at the longer end of your lens to do nice and flattering portraits so once we kind of set up there, the camera's pretty much re ready to go. All we need to do now is grab our 565VX, stick it on the top. It's going to be a bit tricky to fit this in in the video. Turn it on and just make sure it's in ETTL mode. And that, my friends, is it. 
aim the flash at a ceiling or at a wall. I should turn those beeps off, shouldn't I? And start firing away and you will get amazing photos. If you're in a situation where you're noticing that the, the, the flash seems to be a little bit bright on the controls on the flash, you can use exposure compensation to brighten or darken the flash to change its power. And if you want to play around with your depth of field, obviously you can change your aperture on the back. If you notice the flash is taking a while to recharge because it's having to use much power, you could always change your ISO and knock it up. Or if you wanted to go for ultimate quality, you could always knock your ISO down. And there we go, ETL, fully automatic flash, in a flash, incredibly easy with a YN 565. One of the really useful things with a flash is something that might be a little bit counterintuitive, and that's using your flash when you're actually outside taking pictures of people. And you might think, what, what, what outside? But surely if you're outside, there's enough light. Well, sometimes there isn't, is there? You can be outside and your portraits can look a little bit soft, a little bit flat. They don't have that sparkle that you get when you use your flash inside. And uh, basically all they really need is a little bit of light on your subject's faces just to, just to lift stuff. And really importantly, a little bit of a catch light in their eyes. And that's where using your flash outside can, can, really, can really help. And it also helps with sort of, uh, especially if you're outside and it's fairly sunny, you can get you know, shadows under people's eyes and their noses and, and people don't look, don't look their best. However, it's not always quite as simple as just putting your flash onto your camera um, and running around in the aperture priority mode um, and, and, and shooting away. Now, the problem you see is the sun. Because if we go outside and we start taking pictures uh, in sunlight with the flash on, remember how early we set our sync speed. Well, our maximum sync speed in this particular camera with the 350D or my 600D or lots and lots of cameras is a two is two hundredth of a second, which really isn't very uh, isn't very sh um, short at all. If you're out in sunshine, you may well be shooting at five hundredth of a second and things like that. So you you have to be very aware that if you go outside and you start taking pictures of people with your flash on and the photos start to become overexposed, we've kind of got to deal with that. And uh, the first thing you can do is you can. Um, just dial down your ISO on your camera. So if you're shooting at 400 before, dial it down to ISO 100. This will make your camera less sensitive to light, so you can shoot at the 200th of a second longer shutter speeds. Tighten up your aperture as well. So maybe go from if you're shooting wide open, 35, 28, 18, or you know 56. Go to go to f8. Go to f11 and start and start bringing the uh, the the, uh, the exposure down that way, which means that you can use the 200th of a second shutter speed. Sometimes I like playing around with going into the settings and change the um, the sync speed to auto as well when I'm shooting aperture priority mode, because that you can start playing around with that, and that can give you some, some nice looks as well. So if you kind of do those things when you're outside, if you reduce your ISO, uh, tight up your aperture, if you've still got some problems then, then consider trying to move to somewhere that's a little bit of shaded, say open shade, like underneath the tree where it's still nice and bright-ish, but you haven't got direct sunlight on, and that will probably make the difference. And then what you're really looking to do when you're outside, you, you probably haven't got anything to bounce the light off. So what, you, what you're doing is you're just trying to get a little bit of spill from the flash into people's faces. And often if you shoot like that, it might be a little bit too direct. So make sure you pull out your uh, diffuser panel as well, and that can help. Or the other thing to do is tip it up and um, what you're doing then is you're using your, your bounce card to, to just feather the light almost. So if you can imagine, so, so my fist is a person's head, obviously they're a lot, they'll be a lot further apart. If I kind of fire the flash like this, I'm going to get some bounce off the bounce card and that's going to come down and light them up a little bit. Um, but also if I get rid of that diffuser there, and it, even if so, I, so I shoot sort of like that, what's happened is when the flash fire, the light kind of doesn't just come out in a straight line. It comes out like this, doesn't it? And what you can do is you can feather the light so you're not getting the full power of the flash blasting into their face. You're actually getting a softer bit, and you can feather the light so they're just getting caught that way. The other thing, obviously, that you can do as well is if you just go onto the back of the flash, you can use exposure compensation on the flash to lower down the power of the flash that way, just to get that nice balance of the look of your person, because uh, you still want natural skin tones and that sort of stuff, 
with the look of the background as well because you won't, don't want them to be completely white and uh, blown out with a dark background. You want that balance between the two with the flash just lifting their, their features and the flash give just giving a nice little catch light, a little sparkle into their eyes as well. So next time you go on, I go outside and take some photographs and portraits or just photographs of people running around, the kids, the grandkids, stick your flash on, bear those things in mind about the fact you probably have to reduce your ISO and tighten up your aperture and then have a play and you'd be amazed at the difference it can make. It can be quite subtle but it is a really good difference. Now, if you want to make things a little bit more interesting, we can move the YN565EX off camera. And the beauty with this little young neuro flash is that we've got um, plenty of wireless options, which means that we don't need to buy any um, ETTL cords or wireless flash triggers and uh, well it makes it very cheap obviously because we can just do things straight out of the box very convenient and very very simple even with the most basic um, camera whether it be a film camera an SLR a compact something any, any camera at all as long as it's got a flash on you'll be able to use the YM565EX in its basic slave mode where the flash will pop on on the camera and uh, you, you, your pop-up flash will pop and that will trigger this baby and it has a basic slave mode which means that it will fire on the first pop or it has a, uh, a, a I don't really know what the word would be but it's an intelligent slave mode where it waits for the second pop basically because with uh, cameras that have uh, through the lens flash metering the flash actually fires a number of times normally twice wants to expose the scene and set the flash and then to illuminate the scene and the young you can set the young low up with one of its slave modes so that it'll look for that and you fire up on the on the first flash on the second flash sorry which is uh, which is absolutely amazing but again it also with a compatible camera like the 600D the 565EX offers um automatic wireless flash as well um and although this is my Canon 350D so it doesn't the only way that I can use the 350D with the 565 wirelessly like this is, is in its basic slave mode, the slave mode two, I believe it is. Um, even though it can't, can't do that, um, what was I saying? I completely forgot what I was saying. Then. Yeah, even though uh, if this was my 600D, what would happen is that when I press the, when I fire the flash, we don't need a delay on it, do we? <laughs> if I was to fire a shot, um, the flash here would communicate with the flash, so with light, to the receiver on the 565EX, and they would talk to each other, and they would tell each other um, how bright this the 565EX needs to be. And in fact, if you really get into uh, controlling the flash, which I'm not going to go into the real depth in this video, but you can then also uh, fire your flash with this one, and fire this flash as well, and then you can control the balance between the two as well, and the relative power uh, but this is just a beginner's guide, so we're not going to go into that, we're just going to set it up. So, one of the great things, obviously, is going off-camera flash. We can start to play around with all different sorts of lighting setups. Um, and uh, although in this video I'm kind of just using the bare flash, you're better off using things like um, uh, shoot through umbrellas or soft boxes, just to make the light a little bit more um, flattering to your subjects as well. You want a big light source. Um, a big light source will wrap around subjects and just look look a lot nicer than just the bare flash. Um, obviously, there's situations where bare flash is cool. Say you're taking pictures where you want lots of detail and lots of texture. Say I don't know. Say you're taking pictures of like a bodybuilder or something like that. But with uh, especially with like ladies, <laughs> you want the light to be soft and flattering, and that means shooting with the, something like a shoot through umbrella or a reflector umbrella or or a soft box. But then you can start getting into things like. Um, when you're moving the, the flash around, you get into something like butterfly lighting, where you shoot from the top, Rembrandt lighting, where you shoot from somewhere up here, split lighting, where you shoot from the side. It's a whole new world, and I'd recommend, if you really want to get into it, go over to thestrobis.com. And uh, David Hobby's got loads of free tutorials as well about how to uh, how to use flash and get the best out of it. But I tell you what, let's turn the camera around again, and I'll show you how to set up the YN565EX and uh, your camera as well to do ETTL, so automatic flash and manual flash as well. Why don't we now set up uh, our Canon 600D T3i and our YM565EX to fire automatic wireless 
flash. This is where things get magical. Where basically the camera is going to talk to the flash and adjust the brightness of a flash without any wires in between, without any magic effects, um, to get you amazing, easy off-camera flash. So all we've got to do is we've got to turn our flash on, which you can see it is now. It's in ETTL mode but we need to put it in slave mode. And the way that you do that is just press the zoom button and then press the right button. And then we can, you see this little icon pop up and we just go to slave on. If you go too far, you'll get manual slave one, manual slave two, back to off. But we want it there, slave on. And that's it, it's ready to go now. This will basically be listening, if that's the right word, via its um, detector for my 600D. So let's just put that to one side now and turn the 600D on. Again, we're going to be in aperture priority mode, f6.3. Let's turn up my ISO. Let's go to ISO 400 to give the flash a chance to recycle. And then we go to the menu. And in the first menu, we just go down to flash control. And then we just go into built in flash function setting. And we change the built in flash mode, you know, uh, that thing on top to easy wireless okay and then basically now if i pop that up here you might be able to see this i don't know whether you'll see it but when i fire my flash off um this flash hopefully you'll see the this one fire the ym565 flash as well let's see if we can you might have seen that i don't know but anyway what happens is that my flash fires first to tell this thing to fire a pre-flash. So they both fire pre-flashes. The camera then looks at the exposure of the scene in front of it, and then communicates again via flash to this to tell it to adjust its exposure up or down. And then it takes the photo. Obviously this all happens within the, a wink of an eye, um, but it's absolutely amazing. Now you may well think, well, okay, that's very good, but what happens if I then think, well, this is a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark. How do I adjust that? Well, you don't have to go over to the flash. All you do is you go into menu again, go down to flash control again, just down here, go into built-in flash function setting, and then you've got to come down. You don't see it straight away, but down here there's flash exposure compensation, and I can set that. And now I can set a compensation. I can make things darker by going to the left, or I can make things brighter by coming up to the right. And what will that then mean? is that this will then fire the um, this flash here, the YM565, either more powerfully or less powerfully, all wireless without me having to go up and touch it. So let's say we want it a little bit brighter, we put it up to there, a little bit darker, we put it down to there, and then we set it. But it's easy not to see it, because when you first go into the menu, it's not displayed because it's off the bottom. You've got to go down, and there it is. How fantastically easy is that? A fully automatic, wireless, off-camera flash with no wires, no commanders, no pocket wizards, no triggers, all done with just your 600D T3i and the excellent YN565EX. So next what we're going to do is looking at shooting wirelessly with the 600D T3i and the YN565EX, but in manual slave mode. And this will work for basically any any camera that's got a flash on it. So first up, let's just put the 600D T3i to one side and turn the uh, YN565 on. Okay, as you can see at the moment, it's still in the uh, Canon compatible flash mode, so we need to take it out of that. So we press the zoom button and just press that, and then we can flick between. Now, see it's gone to M for manual there, and we've got slave one and slave two. Now. For when we're using a um, a camera that's got automatic flash, like the 600D T3i or any sort of modern DSLR or any compact camera or bridge camera, we want to be in slave two. Because the way that a modern camera works with automatic flash is that when the flash goes off, when the pop-up flash goes off, he said, turn it on. When this flash fires, it actually fires more than once. The first time it fires to, to look at the scene through the lens to gauge how much flash to use and the second time it fires the flash. And so it's very important that when we're in a manual slave situation that our slave flash, the YM565 in this case, knows this. 
because you don't want it to fire the, this flash when the first flash pops here. It's got a wait, and this is what it does in Slave 2. Sometimes, I think they refer to it in the manual as pre-flash cancellation. But all you need to know, when you're fire, playing with something like the 600D T3i and do manual uh, off-camera flash using the Slave mode, it's Slave 2. Now, if you had an older SLR, like a film SLR, or an older cam, older compact, but most older compacts still have automatic flash, but mainly an older film SLR, you would have to do it in Slave 1. And what happens in Slave 1 is, as soon as this flash goes off, this flash fires. But for our purposes, it's Slave 2. Now, once you're in Slave 2, like that, basically, the camera is set up and it's ready to go. And what we can then do is, using the using the uh, left and right buttons we can adjust the power of the flash thus so you know you might want to start off at you know quarter power then go up to half or down to um, an eighth depending on you know the sort of situation you're in meanwhile the 600d all you want to be doing with this really is when you're shooting in this sort of mode let me just get the thing is you'd be shooting in manual mode because you want to, you'll want to be controlling the exposure. You want to be shooting at two hundredth of a second. Your aperture, I don't know, start off at something like f five point six, and then you just pop your flash up. And the the tricky thing <laughs> with um, six hundred Ds, I'm sure it's the same for seven hundred Ds. I know it's definitely right for my um, three fifty D. Is that there is no manual flash mode for this camera. It always fires ETTL, even when you're in manual mode on the on the command dial up here. It's always an automatic. But we go to one two hundred because that's how fast this sync speed. We go to f five points. Well, actually, I tell you what, let's go to f eight. Start off with a stick at a stick at ISO four hundred. I'm shooting in raw, and now basically now when I fire the flash, you might be able to see this. Let's see if you can. Let's see if you can see this happen both flashes fire so there we go and then what you could do as I say is if you want to control the power of the main flash you could then go into the camera menu flash control uh, here we are built-in flash functions and then we could go to ooh, actually sorry that should have been in normal firing and then we could change the exposure compensation of the on-camera flash you know to turn it down basically so it doesn't really illuminate our subject and then we could always go onto the back of the YN565EX to adjust the power that way to make this brighter or darker and it's as easy as that. Now shooting with automatic flash is really easy and uh, really convenient just checking the audio is working there um, but there might be times where you want to go manual and in fact if you go to like the Strobis and read David, Ho David Hobby stuff um, he, I think he basically goes manual all the time now I don't particularly agree with that because I think if you've if you're an amateur especially and you're using your off camera flash or your on camera flash to bounce like around and you're running around chasing after the kids or chasing after the grandkids automatic flash makes your life so much easier because you can run around you can take photos and you know the light's going to go up bounce off the ceiling, bounce off the wall, hit your subjects, and you're going to get really nice photos without having to think about things. Especially if you're moving from um, different lighting situations. Say you're moving around a house or a party or something like that. You know, each room is going to be different as you're moving the camera from, say, this position to this position. Even different colored walls, walls with um, chests of drawers against them, that sort of thing. If you're shooting manual, you'd have to adjust it, but with ETTL flash, automatic flash, you don't have to worry about that. But again, there is a, a time and a place for manual, and you may well find that once you get used to it, you prefer shooting in manual because it gives you total control over how your photos turn out, and uh, your camera and your flash can't be fooled by things that are going on in the picture. And I particularly like to use manual flash and manual exposure, actually. Say it's a bit of a studio situation. Now, I don't have a studio, but sometimes I'll set up my, my white backdrop, backdrop to do some, say, David Bailey-esque photos. And the camera, the camera might be on a tripod or I might be sort of just standing there. And I know that the light is going to be the same, you know, for each photo. Um, so what I'll do then is uh, I'll set the camera to manual, set the flash to manual. And, you know, it's pretty similar as well so let's imagine then we're um, taking a nice portrait with our subject sitting in front of us 
and we're going to be using our flash on top of a camera, you know, just like this. And we're going to be bouncing the flash off the ceiling, you know, to give us a nice soft light. So all you've got to do is you just set your camera to uh, to manual, which is great. Um, set the um, mode of the flash to manual as well. So now they're, they're firing in, well, they're not firing independently. When the camera fires its shutter, it's going to fire the flash. So we need to make sure that we've got our sync speed right. So we set the shutter speed to 200th of a second because that's the maximum sync speed of this particular camera. I'm going to check your manual for yours. And then I'm going to set my aperture. I'm going to start off at f8, nice, nice in the middle. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my flash using the left and right buttons to, I don't know, let's start off at quarter power. And then all I would do, say cheese, <laughs> take a photo, look at the picture on the... <laughs> it's noisy, isn't it? Look at the picture on the back of the LCD screen. How does it look? Too light, too dark. So if it's looking a little bit dark, I can do a couple of things. I could either open up the aperture of my uh, lens, so I could go from like f8 to f5.6, and that would also decrease the depth of field. I could uh, look at the ISO that I'm shooting at. So if I'm shooting at 800 or 400 or 200, I could go up. So I'd go from 200 to 400, 400 to 800, something like that as well. Or I could um, power up my flash. So I could go from quarter power to half power. So let's say I decide, well, I want to stay shooting at quarter power on my flash because uh, I like the, the fast recycle time. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to, um, I'm going to open up my aperture, sorry, to f5.6. Uh, and then, bang, if I'd remembered to take the shutter delay off my camera, which I kind of forgot to do, so I just put it back on again when I <laughs> tried to change the exposure. And then I would take the picture and then look at it again. Actually, yeah, it looks really good. And obviously the opposite goes as well. So if the photo was looking too light and I needed to darken things up a little bit, all I could do is I could reduce the power of the flash, which can be quite good because that'll increase your recycle time. Or I could make my ISO... Um, lower or I could make my aperture tighter but I can't really play around with the shutter speed that much because I'm at 200 of a second and um, that's it really you know it's dead simple it's all about looking at the back of the back of the LCD screen sure if you wanted to you could always look at your histogram as well but I think on most modern SLRs not like this 350D but on modern DSLRs your screen on the back is very very big and especially if you're shooting in RAW even if your exposure's off a little bit, you can recover that in post. And you're probably going to fiddle around with it in post-processing anyway, aren't you? So don't worry about that too much. Now, that's kind of basic on-camera flash manual mode. Um, and you can do the same thing, actually, when, you, when you're when um, you triggering it wirelessly. So if you take the flash off, put it on a stand, or put it on its little stand somewhere, and are using the, uh, the optical slave to fire it, you do, you do exactly the same thing. But there is a little bit of a difference we can do as well. And that's when we start to think about ambient light. So rather than our subject and the background just being illuminated by a flash, what happens if we want to introduce the, the background as light, background as well? How do we control the background light in our photos? And uh, this is a really powerful tool. So let, let's, uh, let's imagine again we're doing a portrait, but we're doing an environmental portrait. So it's somebody in their office, they're sitting behind their office chair, and behind them, say, there's banks of more um, uh, desks with computers on or something, something like that. And what you want to make sure is this person works for this company, and you want the photo not only to have them in it, but also to have the background in it as well. So, you know, how do you, how do you balance the two? Because your subject is nice and close. He's going to be illuminated by your flash. But the background is going to be illuminated by the light coming in through the windows or, or the lights that are on in that particular room. Don't worry, it's very simple. All you have to remember is that the brightness of your subject, the person you're taking a picture of, is controlled by how powerful your flash is. And the brightness of the background is controlled by um, your aperture. So let's think about that for, for a minute. If you were, um, if this person was just sitting in front of their sitting in front of their desk, and you're going to take the picture, um, and you didn't have your flash on, so or your flash was turned off, and you were thinking about how bright you wanted the background, and uh, so, and obviously we're in manual mode now. You'd go up, you'd take you'd take a picture, and uh, if the background was a little bit bright, a little bit dark, sorry, what would you do? Now, you can't change the shutter speed because our shutter speed is stuck at a 200th of a second. 
Um, we could uh, we could reduce the shutter speed a little bit, but let's say you know we don't want to get any movement in. We need to let more light into the camera. So there's two things we can do actually, isn't there? We can increase our ISO to make the camera more sensitive to light, so the background gets brighter. And well, this is the important one: we can increase our aperture size. So if we make our aperture size bigger, so we go from like f8 to f5.6 to f3.5, more light from the background will be coming in, so it will look brighter. It's cool, isn't it? Now we set our subject down and then we put the flash on the camera or we turn it on. Now we fire the picture with a flash on and our subject is looking a little bit dark, say, but our background is looking okay. All we do then is we just increase the power of the flash and that will make them brighter where it's um, bouncing off the ceiling. Um, or say they're too bright, we decrease the power of the flash. If we want the background to look a little bit darker, we tighten up our aperture. Now, I know you're saying, well, wait a minute, if you change your aperture, isn't that going to change the, um, isn't that going to change how bright the flash is? It will as well. So you do have to um, allow for that as well. So if you tighten up your aperture to make the background darker, your subject's going to get a little bit darker as well because of the flash, obviously, going through the aperture. But the way that you then control that, the way you compensate for that, is by increasing the power of the flash. And it's that easy. Now, you may want to just listen to that and thought, oh, that sounds a bit complicated. But all you've got to do is practice. And just remember that your subject brightness is really controlled by your flash. And the ambient light that's all around is controlled by your aperture. And have a play around. And uh, you, you'd be pretty amazed by what you can do with just one flash and one camera and a little bit of knowledge. We covered a lot of ground in this video and I guess the next step now is really for you to go out and practice for yourself. There's loads of great free resources on YouTube, on the internet, how to learn about uh, flash photography, but there isn't really any substitute for putting the camera uh, on, putting the flash on and going out and, and just playing around. Even if it means getting something like a teddy bear or a dummy and putting it on a stand and playing around with different types of light, bouncing the light off different things. And again, I can't, um, the most amazing thing about this type of uh, flash or strobe or speed light um, combined with your camera is that movement there. It's being able to bounce the light off a ceiling or off a wall and it does totally transform the way that your photographs look. Um, the first time you take some photos like that, where you bounce the light, and also you get that little sparkly catch light in people's eyes, you'll go, why didn't I buy one of these flashes or a similar flash as soon as I got my camera? Because trust me, buying a decent uh, automatic flash and putting it on top of your camera and bouncing the light off will make more difference to your photographs of people inside than spending thousands and thousands of dollars on f2.8, f1.8, f1.4, 1.4 lenses. Um, it really does transform transform it. So if you've got a YN65EX, hopefully this video has helped you to maybe learn a little bit more about the camera and explore it a little bit more about the flash uh, sorry, and if you're thinking about buying one, you'll think, well, okay, they're, they're built to a budget. These uh, these flashes. Um, if you break it, sorry, if you drop it, it's probably going to break. But lots of people say they're pretty tough, and um, they're probably got, not going to last as long as the equivalent Canon and Nikon flashes that are obviously a lot more expensive. But I think they offer great value for money and a great way into this type of photography. Now the next step as well is for you to, if you've got one, read the manual because I haven't even talked about things like the, the multi-mode where you can use the flash um, to fire uh, stroboscopically that way. But I think if you're in the market for a uh, automatic ETL flash, you can't go wrong with something like the YM565. And if you've got one already and you haven't been using it that much, slap it on, do some practicing and you'll be really pleased. That's enough from me. I've gone on for enough in this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up any questions or comments, please put them below. You can email me, scalespeeder at gmail.com, and I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed as well. That's enough from me, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.